Over the next seven weeks, I will be attempting to journey through Central Asia, the lands between the Caspian Sea and the Tian Shan Mountains, which form the heartlands of the ancient Silk Road. Starting in Kazakhstan, I will be exploring the historical culture, towns and cities of Uzbekistan, the mountainous country of Tajikistan, and the nomadic land of Kyrgyzstan. Having flown into Almaty, I will be exploring this former capital city of Kazakhstan, which is the country's trading and cultural hub. With little plan in place, I'll be figuring things out as I go and embracing the unknown. Come along as I share my experiences traversing this vast and unfamiliar lands. Good morning from Almaty. Welcome back to another video. Welcome to a new travel series from Central Asia. So I am currently in Kazakhstan and currently in Almaty. Almaty used to be the capital city in Kazakhstan until 1997 and it was moved to Astana. Kazakhstan is the biggest country in Central Asia, the ninth biggest country in the world and is the equivalent size to Western Europe. The former capital Almaty has great public transport infrastructure. As well as being easily navigable using buses and the metro, there are also wide pedestrian walkways and bicycle lanes. If you're like me who likes getting around the city with a public transportation, tasting different bus system or metro system, Almaty has such an impressive transportation system for tourists. Just like that, I am in downtown Almaty. My impression of Almaty so far is that it has this youthful feeling or vibe because there are so many students at so many universities that I came across and you will see so many young adults, teenagers and uh, it, it's such a great vibe, isn't it? I am crossing the zebra cross to get to one of the coffee shop chain that I've been visiting. That's first chain. I did a uh, double espresso for some So generally, coffee would cost around a dollar to two dollars maximum because that's one of the most comfortable thing for me to adjust to, um, having a good coffee because it makes me feel like I'm at home. <laughs> As much as Central Asia is widely known for its Silk Road history, you cannot deny the fact that these countries were part of the Soviet Union and Kazakhstan became independent in 1991. And that was an old, considerably, because that was the year, around the year that I was born. And Kazakhstan became the country with the largest Soviet legacy. So I am in Panfilov Promenade, which is a street dedicated to pedestrian. And this was designed by a Danish um, urban designer. It's quite cute with the colorful, intricate. And I think um, on the weekend, there must be some kind of pop-up shop on market. So along this street, there are lots of upscale restaurants or cafes that people like to enjoy. There is a modern Ukrainian cuisine. There is potential Actually, a coffee shop and even a Japanese restaurant. Abe Opera House was found in 1933 as a music studio before it became a theatre a year later. If you don't know, in Central Asia, the Kazakh and Kyrgyz are historically nomadic people, whereas the Tajiks and the Uzbeks are generally traders. And this contrast are also fascinating to look at, trying to understand the historical context of each country. This cute <laughs> wants to say hi. <laughs> hi. What's your name? My name is Yultus. 
Iltus. Yes. Iltus. Uh, so they are all students, actually. They're also this group, so, but they're all shy. It's so good. So far, the people here are so friendly. Come to Kazakhstan. Our country is really beautiful. Yes, and especially Almaty. Yes. Yeah. It's a really cool girl. A cool city. Yes. <laughs> a cool city. Oh my God, I'm, so, I'm so nervous. So they are getting ready to interview me. <laughs> I found and stumbled upon this market that I didn't expect and it is so exciting to look at. This is a weekend market, hundreds of stalls, people selling all sorts of stuff. I think so far this is the best unplanned thing I found in the city. I think these are different types of sausage, probably horse meat. We've got different selection of fish as well. The locals are here probably to stock up some of their weekly groceries. We are entering Al Mali metro station with just 80 cent you can get a ticket. Taking metro in different parts of the world is something that is close to my heart. <laughs> I don't know how grand it is to be in one of these metro stations. So metro station in Almaty began its uh, construction in the 1980s during the Soviet uh, Union time. However, when Soviet Union collapsed, the funding also evaporated. Only 23 years after that, in 2011, the metro station finally was published and released to the public. Welcome to Baikonur Station, a metro station dedicated to Baikonur Cosmodrome, the largest space complex in the world. If you don't know, Baikonur is actually a launching site for many space expeditions that located in southern Kazakhstan and it was fully functioned during the USSR but currently is basically sort of being rented by the Russian Federation. I feel like I'm in a cool museum but this is just a metro station. currently in a botanical garden in Almaty, paid 850 tenge, which is around less than two dollars, to enter this uh, place. What I want to show you is actually ta -da! the beautiful majestic mountain from here is very clear. <music> walking towards Zankov's Cathedral, which is considerably the Russian Orthodox Church that was built in the 1907. I think that's a parliament building with Kazakh flag hanging around. Almaty becomes so lively when the weather is like this. All the locals are out and about. This is the park that goes straight towards the cathedral. There are also many locals hanging out. I can see the church peeking through. It's so interesting inside of this church. Interior design is incredible. 
like, yeah, I'm just saying no. Mm. And trying to respect other members of the church as well. Yeah. It's so interesting to see because I think Christianity is a minority in Kazakhstan and there are still so many people coming here. Can you see that in front of the church itself, this becomes an amusement park in itself and so many toddlers. Too bad I'm too big for one of these cars, probably in the future. So I've made it to Kop Tobe, is that how you say it? Um, Gondola Hill and paid 700 tenge for a uh, one way up, probably like shuttle bus like that. Look at this, this is like full to the brim with locals, especially in, on Saturday afternoon like this. Tourists and locals alike are here. Can you see this? This is Alatau Mountain, I think. So from here, you can see an overview of Almaty and locals are enjoying this as well. Unfortunately, it's quite hazy. Do you know what's funny? I was supposed to take this cable car because that's the intention to get here. But first, I mistakenly thought that I should go up first and therefore take another cable car to even further up. But that's not the case. It's actually going further down. But it doesn't seem like it is working, so I don't know. It's so cute that local are taking photos in front of this I love Kok Tobe. Whereas there is actually a mountain background over here, which is much more fascinating. Thank you so much for watching today's episode from Almaty, the former capital city of Kazakhstan. And I am just so grateful to be able to visit a new country, a new destination. So make sure to check out the next video because I'll be heading to the western part of Kazakhstan, visiting the sea that actually disappeared, the Aral Sea. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Make sure to check out my Patreon account if you wish to support a kid like me and my work. See you again next time. Bye.